Today, we're going to investigate Bitcoin addresses and balances with Spiderfoot on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While some perfectly legitimate people use Bitcoin, it's also used by terrorists, drug dealers, and also other people that might need to be investigated. So today, we're going to take a look at Spiderfoot. Now, Spiderfoot has a little known and recently implemented CLI, or command line interface, that allows us to search for Bitcoin addresses contained on a website and then query the balance associated with the wallet that's attached. Now, in order to run this, we'll need to have Python 3 installed. So before we begin, you can check out the link in the description to make sure you have Python 3 and all the requirements installed. After that, we can get started. Today, we're going to take a look at Spiderfoot. And before we go into the full thing, we're going to look at a couple of the really interesting and specific use cases that we can do without diving into the entire product, which as you can see is pretty expansive and also requires you to run a web server, which is great and really interactive. But let's say we just want to do some quick and dirty work with the command line interface. Well, that is a really cool way of using Spiderfoot to do an investigation on, let's say, an organization that's raising funds using Bitcoin. Now, a lot of organizations like using Bitcoin, and that could be a legitimate one or an illegitimate one. But if you want to monitor their performance, then what we can do is identify any Bitcoin addresses associated with the domain by scraping it and then pass that into basically a query to find out the exact balance, which is pretty cool. So this is the Spiderfoot website where there's documentation and lots of other great stuff, spiderfoot.net. So you can refer there for more information about the project. But we're going to head over to the GitHub, which is github.com slash smicolif, sorry, uh, slash Spiderfoot. And you can scroll down to see a little bit more about the project. And the full version of it relies on Python 3, which is a very commonly uh, pre-installed uh, thing to have on Linux and Mac OS. On Windows, you might need to install it, but I believe it's also pre-installed. So this should be a very easy tool to run. And they've also made these great uh, video guides. So if you want to check out some other things to do with the various modules in Spiderfoot, then you can check them out here. Now, basically, Spiderfoot allows you to run all these different modules, which are search, uh, basically like little search queries that go out and go and bring information into whatever chain of modules you're creating. And what you can do is chain these together to make specific search queries. And in, that, in our case, we're going to be combining two of them, one to scrape the web page and the other to pass the Bitcoin addresses into a query search and then get the information back. So you can see there are a lot of modules and this is really cool. So if you want to dig into this and look at all the different ways that Spiderfoot can do a ton of different things, there's, as you can see, just a lot of different, oh, wiggle.net, interesting. A lot of things that I have not even seen before uh, that you can do with Spiderfoot. So it is a very cool and very modular tool. All right, so today we're going to refer to the documentation. And in the documentation, we can go to the installation. And the installation suggests that we just need to git clone Spiderfoot. So if you want to follow along, we are going to in a terminal window. Uh, and I am already in Spiderfoot, but I'll see the back in my directory. Um, we're going to do pasting git clone spiderfoot uh, and as you can see it already exists we'll cd into spiderfoot and if we ls we can see there's a requirements.txt so we'll do from here it doesn't really tell us what to do next but if you were to just try to run spiderfoot then it would probably fail because you don't have some of the requirements so thankfully there's a requirements.txt so we can do pip3 install tack r requirements.txt and that'll go ahead and install everything you need to run Spiderfoot. And this is nice and easy and also means that if you don't want to go through the bother of creating the web interface and doing all that stuff, you can just do a quick search for the information you need through this easy to install interface. So now we have the program ready to go. We have all of the requirements installed on our system, which is great. And we can actually use a uh, command line uh, to, uh, sorry, a command line argument to pass the sort of information we would like to have returned. So we've got this great result. We have a segmentation fault and our core has been dumped, which means everything is great and ready to go. Um, but in reality, I've actually pre-installed these before. So uh, these are already fine. 
Now, this was uh, relatively easy for me to install the first time, so I'm gonna run it a second time just to make sure it runs through. But we should be able to run uh, Spiderfoot regardless. Yes, I know there was a problem. All right, there we go. So we see that all the requirements have already been satisfied, which is great because I pre-installed them. But after yours are done running, and if you run into any trouble, you might want to go ahead and try putting sudo in front of this. It can damage your Python installation, but in other cases, like in my case, running Ubuntu, you'll need to do that to do some sorts of installations. So we now have this installed and we should be able to run uh, sf.py. So if we type ls to see all the files in the directory, we can see sf.py and that is the main tool. So we'll type python3 period slash sf.py. And if we just run it, we see that we need to specify target. So great, we are ready to go. All right, so let's start out by taking a look at the Bitcoin balance in a Bitcoin address that we scrape from a website. So we're gonna have to chain a couple things together. And this is where we get into modules. So the general structure of this is going to be sudo python3, and again, you don't really need the sudo if you already have root privileges, I'm just in the habit of doing it when I'm in Ubuntu, but python3, uh, sf.py, we'll tack, um, tack m for, for modules, and we'll pass spf spider, or sorry, sfp spider, and make sure you don't get that confused because that tripped me up earlier, but sfp spider, um, which will basically spider the web pages and find all the information inside, SFP Bitcoin, which will look, look for Bitcoin addresses, and SFP Blockchain, which will take the Bitcoin addresses we've discovered previously and pass them to an API, which will return the exact amount of Bitcoin currently in the wallet. Now here's where we can type TAC S, and this will allow us to, to basically pick our target. So we will be searching for Bitcoin for charity, and then we can uh, do tack capital F and we'll need to basically pass in these variables we're using, which is the Bitcoin address, the Bitcoin balance and tack Q to use the command line interface. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. There we go. All right, so let's expand this and see exactly what we're getting. So I'm going to drop this down and we can see that from the Bitcoin for Charity website, this is listing a whole bunch of different charities, public Bitcoin addresses. And this is leading back to a wallet, which we're getting the exact amount of Bitcoin that is contained in. Now, as you can see, most of these charities aren't really raising that, uh, that much. The maximum seems to be three Bitcoins here. And that's really not that interesting if uh, we were looking for maybe somebody moving a large amount of money. Now, what might be more interesting is maybe a list of the top 100 Bitcoin transactions or the largest Bitcoin wallets at the current time. And frequently, this will just lead you to a big, long list of different exchanges. And typically, this will lead you to a big, long list of exchanges that all have a giant pooled account that is packed full of Bitcoins, one of which we saw exceeded $2 billion. Now, that's pretty incredible, but if you're also hunting for Ethereum, there's also a command that will do basically the same thing, only instead of pu pulling up the exact balance, it's only able to just scrape the Ethereum addresses. You'll need to query this in another way yourself. Now, if you're looking for Ethereum, there is another module we can use that will query this, although it doesn't return the exact balance. So if you need to find that, then you'll need to use a different service to find it. Now to get started, we will just go ahead and use the Ethereum command. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear this output so you can see how similar it is. It's really, really similar to the commands for Bitcoin, only we're going to be using the same spider we were using before to make sure that we're spidering the pages that we specify, and then the Ethereum command to query for any Ethereum addresses. We'll also need to parse the Ethereum address. And in this case, there isn't an Ethereum balance, so I can actually remove this and it shouldn't really affect anything, I believe. And if I run this, I should be able to run it on ethereumdonation.com and get all the Ethereum uh, addresses associated with uh, links on the site. 
So let's say that you're investigating a website that is using some sort of cryptocurrency in order to raise funds. Well, this is a way, at least for Bitcoin, that you would be able to monitor the exact number of Bitcoins in the wallet. And for Ethereum, you would be able to scrape all the data of the addresses directly off the website without even having to go to the website yourself. Now, if you want to see some of the largest transactions, I can simply go to a search window and look, look for top 100 Bitcoin addresses and pick a website that monitors the top 100 Bitcoin addresses. And now, as I can see, I can simply, no, I can simply link to this and any of these websites that automatically ranks top transactions or keeps track of the largest transactions is a good way to then run the scraping tool and learn information about the amount of Bitcoins that are being traded. Now, as you can see, we're able to, depending on the source of our data, scrape information about the Bitcoin addresses that have been aggregated. So depending on the reason that the Bitcoin addresses have been scraped together, this could be a really good way to monitor transactions moving in an organization. Using Spiderfoot CLI, it's easy to track organizations that are using Bitcoin or Ethereum to do fundraising. In fact, you can simply monitor the exact balance of the Bitcoin wallet in order to see exactly how well this organization's fundraising is going. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you get confused, make sure to check the link in the description for any steps and troubleshooting. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.